If you've been a member Star Trek fan for some time, you'll know of the Star Trek Starship's official collection. Brought to you by Eagle Moss Limited, the collection allowed Trekkies to purchase over 200 die-cast model Starships, ranging from the legendary USS Enterprise to the most obscure Starships that only appeared in one episode. Oh, and space stations. While the company expanded to produce books and the build your own Enterprise D model in recent years, July 2022 brought sad news. Eagle Moss Limited had appointed administrators and essentially gone bankrupt. After weeks of radio silence due to the administration period, employers can now finally speak out about what has been happening behind the scenes. I sat down with Ben Robinson, one of the most senior people at Eagle Moss and now a former company employee. We've spoken about what has gone on behind closed doors, as well as what products were in development, such as the USS Stargazer and more. Also, if Trekkies can look forward to more Starships in the future, via another means. Enjoy the interview, and check out the link in the video description to trekcentral.net where you can view this in article format. So, uh, I think we should start off with really, um, you've obviously now been allowed to speak about being made redundant by Eagle Moss, which, you know, there's been a bit of radio silence since these sort of murmurings of um, the bankruptcy sort of came um, afloat. Like, I think it was by LinkedIn, we picked it up from like some business analysts who obviously had seen the administration files going in. I'm not sure if it's up on Cumbie's house at the minute, but obviously as soon as people caught that, it was kind of official, wasn't it? And unfortunately, there was no communication from the company. But what could you tell us from that sort of POV? Well, from, from the inside, we were all told that we couldn't talk to anybody. Um, not to talk to anyone. And in fact, the, the, the administration process takes quite a long time. So uh, from that first announcement until actually last Friday was when the company actually entered administration. So okay. technically, we've all been, all of the staff have been employees during that time. Um, and we were told that we couldn't talk to anybody. Um, I, you know, it's not for me to sort of really understand the whole reasoning behind that. Um, but it's obviously very frustrating um, to me. And I feel... You know, I feel very bad for all the people who didn't get any communication from the company and had no idea what was going on. Uh, to be fair, what was going on was changing a lot, and I'm, I don't really want to get into that, but there were a lot of different things happening behind the scenes um, that didn't come to fruition. Um, and it's all ended with the company finally going into, into administration. It is really unfortunate, as a lot of um, people have pointed out, really, because, uh, you know, not it's really unfortunate for the employees, which I think is something people should take into account a bit more yeah. like i'm seeing a lot of uh, you, you yourself being one <laughs> a lot of like obviously tweets you know being upset the collections are never going to finish and such but the employees are really basically the people who are you know left out in the dark right now of like you know having a, a fantastic job just you know swept under the feet unfortunately yeah i mean it's tough for people i mean obviously a lot of people i've worked with for a long time um who are now finding themselves out on the job market for the first time in a long time um so yes i mean it's it is no fun and i i really appreciate the the fact that people do appreciate that you know when you you look at my twitter feed or whatever people are being very you know understanding and, and kind about it um so yeah the first you know my first immediate priority has always been the people i've been working with for well in many some cases the last 15 or even 20 years um but certainly you know uh, a lot of people have been working with very closely for the last 10 it's one of those things where it's people don't realize how long Eagle Moss has actually gone on, really, isn't it? Because a lot of people are familiar with the Star Trek collection. And I was just thinking before we jumped on the call, I remember picking up the Enterprise D, the first, you know, um, collection model back in like WH Smith in 2012 or 13, I think. It was ages ago now, but it's like it's been going longer than just the Star Trek collection, hasn't it? I think since 1979. Um... So yeah, I mean, Eagle Moss is, a, is an old and long established company that has a, a long history of having done all sorts of different projects. Um, you know, Star Trek's obviously been a really big thing for us. Uh, Doctor Who both have been really big things for us for the last 10 years or so. But, you know, it has a, goes back way, way beyond that. Lots of robots and things mm. like that. I mean, one of the big sort of questions at the minute, as I'm not sure if you're able to answer this, is obviously a lot of people are concerned about, you know, the collections i mean i've got half an enterprise d build sat next to me right now sure. which i remember us speaking about it when you launched that project it was like quite an ambitious one of us i'm building your own enterprise d and uh, we've seen a like a complete version at dst last year um do you think people ever be able to finish those sort of projects or is it i, I hope good? so yes i mean i think there are, there are lots of reasons to think that somebody else will step in and take over those projects um just to, to reassure everybody um you know, I can't give any guarantees, but what I do know is that they should be profitable. 
Mm. Um, and that if someone were to step in and, you know, there are lots of things to sort out, um, but there are reasons why it makes a lot of sense for people to sort them out. So I'd be you know, optimistic um, that there, there will be a bit of an interruption that all of the build-ups that we were working on should get completed. Yeah. I think it's understandable to have like interruption because I imagine probably licensing is a thing behind it really, isn't it? And lots of business and legal discussions going on. Yeah, there's lots of legal stuff. The Eagle Moss contract has to be cleaned up. Um, but, you know, nothing could happen until Eagle Moss had gone into administration. So, no, you know, nobody else could take over those rights. Um, the licensors have to, I mean, you know, it's Star Trek, it's CBS. They have to find someone who they have faith in. Um, you know, they have to believe that the whoever takes it over is going to do a good job with it and finish it, which I'm, I'm, I'm confident that there are people who would um so yeah the, the, it, it, there's stuff to sort out for sure um but there are a lot of people trying to trying to do that you mentioned um in one of your tweets you put up last night cbs are supportive in this and i think it's maybe because arguably the star trek starships collection and the spin-offs are some of the most popular star trek merch around in recent years and you mentioned cbs is supportive of that what indicates to you that cbs is supportive is that something you know personally or is it just murmurings no i know personally um they they were blindsided by this um you know the senior management at eagle moss didn't tell them what was going on until very very late in the day so they haven't had any time to to put any other plans in in place or or had much opportunity to try to fix things um i know that they're very concerned about the people who are left with incomplete models and it's very important to them to find a solution to that um, again, there are no guarantees, but I can I can tell you that they really care and they really want to make sure that happens, and that that's the first priority for them. Um, and then they would, you know, very much like someone to carry on making diecast spaceships, starships. Um, but the priority is the people who've been left with something that's incomplete. So that'd be the likes of the, um, I guess, the Enterprise D and things like that. Um, those sort of collections. Yes, that sort of thing. So, I mean, you know, Eagle Moss was running seven or eight of those kind of build-up collections. Um, and so, obviously, there are a lot of different people left with uh, incomplete models. And that is something that, you know, I mean, we need to try and do something to sort out. Um, and as I say, I'm optimistic that there are people who will want to take those projects over. Um, because at the end of the day, they make money for people. So... You know that's important and i know the licensors actually uh, i know people are very cynical about licensors but actually they they really care about the, the brand and about the the fans um it's important to them that you know the the way the way this stuff works now is very much about building a fan base um and they they do really care and they they want to fix this problem um but it's not completely under their control that's good to hear because i think in like modern times now a lot of people sometimes don't have faith in brands that they had for quite a while like a lot of with rise of social media a lot of brands get a bit more flack than they used to so mm. hearing that they're still like you know committed to the consumer at the end of the day is good to know yeah they absolutely are i mean it's very easy for people to uh, to blame to blame the licensor or to complain that they don't do what you want them to do with your brand um and you know they, they have to satisfy a lot of different people a lot of different masters um but they were you know they've been behind these projects all along um and they are very concerned that nobody is left in a you know an, an unacceptable un unfortunate position so they're doing everything they can but as i say there are it's not completely in their hands they're not you know they they, they don't own the factory they don't uh control mm -hmm. where the is they uh, still have contractual obligations to Eagle Moss, all of which have to be unpickled. So, you know, they're doing everything they can. Um, and obviously, you know, they have lawyers who advise them about what they can and can't say. And, you know, they don't, <laughs> it leaves them hostage to fortune. Um, and particularly while the contracts with Eagle Moss are in place, it's not appropriate for them to discuss um, anybody else who might be interested in completing the collections. I suppose it is a case of waiting for the administration bit of Eagle Moss now to go through. And as we know from like watching businesses, you know, fall in recent years due to the pandemic, administration is not the next two weeks. It can last quite a while to get that sort of mess cleaned up and decide what direction they want to go in, really. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the administrators, their job is just to raise as much money as possible. So, you know, they have to pay the creditors um, and, 
you know, that includes the licensors and the factories and the shippers and the warehouses and all of those kind of people. And, and understandably, everybody, their priority is getting paid. Um, but actually, what I can tell you is CBS is, you know, it's equally important to them to make sure that people are able to complete their collections. We spoke on, I spoke on Star Trek there quite specifically. I mean, one of the recent collections was um, Stargate, for example. <laughs> How do you see that proceeding in the future? Do you reckon MGM now, who are mixed in with Amazon, given a moment, do we see anything happening there? What's your thoughts on that? Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to them yet. In fact, and in fact, I'm gonna after I finish this call, I'm gonna be emailing them to to say that you know similar situation that um, we hope that we can find someone who will take over the license. Um, there are reasons to think again that it would be appealing to someone, um, but we're trying to find. You know companies that would be interested and to um there are lots of different lots of different ways that could work mm. um but again none of them are guaranteed and i don't want to jinx anything by of by course. saying it um but again i think you know eagle moss had established itself as the the preeminent um manufacturer of diecast spaceships of one form or another um and that's you know, they, that was not the problem. You know, they, they, those products are successful. Um, so there are good reasons to think that somebody else will want to take them over. I mean, when you go to events, like we we remember going to DST and stuff like that and just seeing the boxes, like in your own guys' stores, but also fans were picking up. You had resellers, all this, all like, so I've got a few <laughs> behind me here. Like the box are so iconic with the art of starships. It really is, you know, something that made fans go wild because Star Trek, much like Stargate, is there for starships and like Star Wars and such everybody has those iconic ones they want to pick up like i've got pike's enterprise and the daedalus from stargate over there the two ones i always go crazy about and many other fans i think that's one reason why people love the starships collection was because you guys got through how many ships in the end you guys got through i that's an interesting question actually because it depends on how you count mm. uh, because there are things that were in development that not out there were things where um they are stuck in a, on a boat literally somewhere or yes. on a port in china um but i mean roughly speaking for for star trek it's like about 400 ships i saw uh, um, someone responded to your tweet earlier with a picture of their cabinets full of the ships <laughs> yeah um, yeah there's a board cube That's in incredible. there it's, it's mental like how many uh, when we broke the news unfortunately about eagle moss you know going bankrupt we invited people to share their collection images and like i thought i had a big collection of like all of them scattered around the house but you see people who've got an entire room dedicated to them how does that make you feel like seeing all your work so valued by um you know fans like that it's an extraordinary thing i mean i've I've worked on all sorts of things over the, the last 25 years. And this is one of the, uh, it's just incredible. I mean, you know, to see people who have got so many of them. I mean, I haven't, I mean, you can see these boxes behind me. That's my collection, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's extraordinary to think that that people have enjoyed it that much. And it's, you know, have put that much um, emotional and financial investment mm. in it's incredibly flattering and and i have to say the the response to the tweets has been phenomenal um it's been very flattering very emotional experience reading all of that um you know i think people have every right to be angry um particularly the people in the build-ups you know and i think we you know we need to try and do everything we can to to help them um with the ships i think you know in some ways we were pretty close to complete i mean actually well they'll tell you that you know i can i've got my list actually we're not complete but you know we we've done all the major designs um from all the the kind of pre-modern era stuff right up to the the last seasons of discovery and strange new worlds so um you know it, it's it's that's an incredible achievement um and i don't think i ever expected it to go go this far um, <laughs> i don't think anybody kind of done Speaking of like collection and such, I'm not sure if you can answer this question. It's slightly cheeky for you to answer it, but a lot of fans are wondering about future starships, like the Protostar is one I keep seeing <laughs> mentioned and mentioned. Were there any plans of that? Was it in construction stage? Yeah, I mean, we the Egomos intention, I mean, I mean, this is not why the company's gone bankrupt, mm. but we were starting to get to the point where some of the background Romulan ships, for example, from the first season of Picard weren't profitable. Um, you know, and that was a, a bit of a concern. So we were starting to think perhaps a little bit more carefully about whether we did everything, because up to that point we had. Um, 
but you know there absolutely the intention was i mean you know we we had the files we were getting ready to do the protostar and the stargazer um you know looking at the the additional sto ships that turned up in season two of picard i have some ideas about some of the things that are in the season three of picard <laughs> um you know so absolutely um the intention was to continue and i i i do hope that we can find someone who who is interested in doing that um i would certainly putting some effort into it um it, it's just how quickly it can be resolved and and you know making sure it makes sense to someone financially definitely i, I think of a rise of like the star trek fandom in recent years it is like a no-brainer really for someone to eventually pick it up it's just who that person or who that company is um and whether you know they can commit financially because just before we hopped on here we were quickly talking about the finances of the world right now it's not exactly easy for most people around there like even individuals like us or companies at the minute to actually commit to things like this really choose your heating or your starship um <laughs> do you want an enterprise or cooking <laughs> Yeah, well, I hope. I mean, I hope everyone would make the right choice in that case. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm optimistic that there is still a market for these things. I mean, this is where I have to, I have to try and be able to demonstrate that level of interest to people. Um, so, you know, the more people who can follow me on Twitter or who can, you know, maybe we'll talk about setting up some petitions or something. You know, I need to be able to demonstrate to people that this is an area of interest um and that there are enough people who would want to buy these these things um i you know i i hope that it will be relatively easy to convince someone i mean there'll all still be all sorts of difficulties to overcome um but that's that's what we need to do now is to to be able to demonstrate to someone who is going to prepare to back this financially because die cast chips are expensive they're very very expensive to create the first one um so we just need to convince them that there really is a market there. So I remember we've spoken before, I think it was quite a while, maybe a couple of years ago now, about the price of um, sort of making the initial one because you've got to mold it and sort of design it. And there's several things going into the process of getting that first Starship made or even any model, whether it be, you know, Doctor Who figure or anything like that. It's, it's expensive to make that first one to then actually get it out mass produced as well. The cost of die cast are the really considerable thing. So on figurines, it's a bit different. You obviously you want the best possible sculpt, um, and that's not cheap. Um, but um, with die cast, you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars of tooling. You know, those are expensive, expensive pieces of kit um, that take a lot of investment. And you know, if you if you only want one, it is not economic. <laughs> Um, you need to start selling in decent volume and it's it's interesting you know you what what that what those numbers are but you need to be able to convince people that you can achieve those numbers um and and that's the kind of thing i have to think about now is how can i gather the kind of data that will convince people you know and as i say the more people that follow me on twitter or will look at maybe setting some petitions up or and you know um maybe some kind of newsletter or something we just need some kind of um some kind of ammunition to convince yeah. people with money that this is a worthwhile venture i think like a petition um and maybe we'll speak about this later on it could be a fantastic idea to go and support and we've seen what the power of what the star trek fandom can do i mean look at strange new worlds now whether they were thinking about before season two of discovery ended but arguably the fandom played a very important role in getting that captain pike series and you've met tj who works um at trek central as well with me and who makes the star trek pike account you know one of the big champions there of making sure people made enough noise to tell the producers yeah we want to see more of ants and matters of that i think the star trek fandom can and that change if they want to no absolutely i mean um, the people will listen i mean you know star trek fandom might not be the world's largest fandom but it's a very loyal um and very serious fandom you know and people do take that seriously um so yeah i mean we just need to be able to to demonstrate to people that this is you know this is a, a viable option i think a lot of people might go well you've made 400 ships what is there left to do and that's uh you know that's not an unreasonable question um if i were the man with the money it would probably be the one i was asking how but, would you uh, answer that um question if you could I, I mean i guess the obvious answer might be well we've got stranger worlds and more stark media coming out and such like that so i guess there's an easy answer but how would you answer that one 
Yeah, and I think there, that that is the first part of the answer mm. is that the, you know, there's new stuff coming all the time, and that's that's one of the great things. Um, I think you know what you see is that there are some sort of top tier ships that um, you know anybody can see the financial argument for doing an enterprise or Voyager. You know that's that's relatively easy. So the fact that the Protostar hasn't been done is a, is a good thing from the point of view of trying to get somebody interested in in doing more ships. Um, you know, I feel um, optimistic about the sales potential of the Stargazer, the new Stargazer, for sure. Um, but this is where we need something to to demonstrate to people that there is a real interest, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and where if we can put something together again, we might have to to try and explore some kind of options for pre-orders or something like that. I'm not a big fan of people having to give money up front, particularly after what's just happened. Um Definitely. But uh, the idea of people demonstrating their interest and then, uh, you, know, you know, and some way of knowing that that interest is serious as well, because lots of people would say, yeah, I'd love that. But, you know, when it comes to it, it's like, oh, well, not for that much. And, you know. I've seen a project before. Um, it was, I can't remember what company it was buying there, but I have a model of it. It's Ross and Ante, a big version on my shelf here. Um, mm. And I think it was a Kickstarter or something similar where you paid yeah. like, uh, it was 100, 120 quid or something like that. You got like a ton of extra stuff with it. And I think it's, about a 40 centimeter long Ross and Ant. it's quite big um but basically you did this kickstarter and then they made it um so i guess that is yeah. a sort of like pre-ordering but it's a little it, bit i mean it's difficult it's, made. For, it's difficult for licensors they don't like kickstarters on the whole because mm. if the brand doesn't if it doesn't work if it doesn't raise enough money that reflects poorly on the brand um you know people will look at it and say well you couldn't even raise enough money to make a model of you know of the rossi or whatever um so like you know people understandably are, are wary of kickstarters and a lot of companies can use that as a way of saying oh well i don't really want to give you any money now let me do a kickstarter and you know it, it's there are reasons why people are, are cautious about it and that's mm -hmm. they're understandable they're good reasons um but having something where maybe you know we committed to doing like well we got someone to fund us you know to commit to doing the protostar and the stargazer but then we were like well we'll do one more but which one do we do you know will enough people sign up for it that kind of thing um it's just important to convince any new investors or any any new company that wants to get into this space that doing something that isn't the enterprise d is is worthwhile that does make sense i think hopefully you know the fan can make enough noise to actually warrant continuing its collection because when i look at the starships i was walking around the office yesterday looking at them and you got some behind you it's like it's a shame if this was the end of a road for like the whole collections and you're optimistic something continue i think a lot of fans are as well i'm just scrolling down twitter while talking to you and seeing everyone talk about what models they want made from the orville to star to expanse and doctor who like i see some of their source section of the enterprise d here it's, it's yeah fantastic. I mean, there's loads of, yeah i mean i i believe that there is still an interest there um it's just a bit different when you're trying to to find new backers or find someone who is you know interested in doing this they need a bit more proof a bit more evidence and um, and you know it's relatively easy to say oh look but there are lots of people on my twitter and if you actually top them up it's like well there's 100 150 people or something like that that's not enough that you know it's enough to make a lot of noise online but it's not enough to to fund a program is the um, difference when it comes to handing over that you know 20 pounds or something like that it's especially the current climate around the world as well yeah exactly i mean i, I you know I'm, I'm i am by nature an optimist so i hope that anything new that we were able to do by the time we got there the, the world economy would have improved a bit you know i mean i think we're looking at the next year is going to be tough but after that i think we'll be coming out the other side of it um I, yeah, I, I, I just, I'm, 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 I am optimistic, but I think we're going to need some help from the fan community to convince people that it's a worthwhile endeavor. As a quick one as well, um, what's next for yourself, by the way? Is some, another job lined up, or where do you see yourself going now? I'm sure many well, of the fans I mean, are, you know, concerned. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of I definitely feel I'm not done with all of these things. Um, you know, Star Trek's been a big part of my life for over 20 years now. Mm. Um, and I have, I very much like to find a way of continuing doing a lot of what I've been doing um, and some new things. There are obviously more ideas, but so I'm not sort of, uh, 
um, I'm lucky enough that I, I don't have to go and take a job stacking shelves um, in change, change but it's not that there's anything wrong with that but um, I'm going to try as I say I'm going to put a bit of energy into trying to to resurrect these programs and saying and hoping that I can be involved in that uh, there's no you know no guarantee I have no right to be involved but I do have the necessary expertise so um, I hope that's what I'm going to be able to do um, and I hope that I'll be back shortly you know with a, a more formed plan about exactly what that involves that's fantastic to hear ben and um, we'll leave it here um as i think we've covered most of the critical questions today and hopefully we can catch back up soon to uh discuss any sort of movements potentially in the future as well yeah as soon as there's um as soon as there's any movement i'd be delighted to come back and to let people know and even if that is just like okay i've worked out this is what we need to do to convince someone you know um but, but yeah it's really important to me as i say that the it's been very uncomfortable sitting there not being able to say anything and seeing particularly the people with the builds that are incomplete, um, you know, who are, who've spent a lot of money, who are understandably anxious. Um, and I, I can't tell them with a hundred percent hand of my heart that someone is going to come along and pr I can't promise that someone is going to help them finish, but I believe that it's extremely likely that someone will. Um, and I know, that there are conversations going on with people who are interested in doing it. Um, but there is a bit of a mess to sort out.